Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP controlling module. In controlling module, we'll be looking forward to the overview on controlling and the course content that we will be covering in the controlling module. As a part of table of content, today's training session we will be going through SAP controlling overview, controlling submodules, which also refers to the course contents, then organizational structure. So once we are done with the course content, we'll be going through one of the first chapter or the first lesson of the controlling configuration steps that is organizational structure. So let's move on to the SAP controlling overview. So the objective of controlling is to manage the cost and revenues in the organization. Controlling provides information for management decision making. It facilitates coordination, monitoring and optimization of all processes in an organization. The primary objective of controlling is to minimize the cost and maximize profit through actual and planned comparison or analysis. Controlling which is also known as CO is the term by which SAP refers to managerial accounting in the general world. So moving on to the next is the course content which uh, are also known as the controlling submodules overview. They are the different submodules as you can see in the diagram. The COCEA refers to the cost element accounting. CCA refers to cost center accounting. Then PCA is profit center accounting, PC refers to product costing and PA refers to profitability analysis that is COPA as per the diagram. Apart from that, we will be also going through internal orders and report painter. So these are the different sub modules of the controlling module which makes the controlling module foolproof for its for achieving its objective. Now if you talk about each of these sub modules in just in a brief, cost element accounting provides with an overview of the cost and revenues that occur in an organization. Cost elements play a very important role in the reconciliation or alignment of cost and postings between the FI module and the CO module. Most of the values are moved automatically from financial accounting that is FI module to the controlling module. This ensures that expenses in financial accounting and primary cost in managerial accounting or management accounting can be reconciled. Moving to the next submodule is cost center accounting. Cost center accounting is the organizational unit within a controlling area that represents a defined location of cost increments. It defines the small area of responsibility within the company that causes and influences cost the lowest Level, level to which you can meaningfully assign direct and indirect cost. Created for internal controlling purpose and provides a tool that can collect cost. Cost center accounting lets you analyze the overhead cost according to where they were incurred within the organization. The profit center accounting. Profit center accounting evaluates the profit or loss of individual independent areas within an organization. These areas are responsible for their cost and revenues. A profit center is a management oriented organizational unit used for internal controlling purpose. You can divide up to up your company into different profit centers in different ways as that depends as per the company to company scenarios like 
by pro by product wise it can be divided on the basis of product line or divisions it can be divided on the basis of regions or locations or by functions like the different functional departments within a company like production sales finance and accounts and all so profit center is a very important part in the controlling module and with the help of profit center even internal division wise balance sheets even can be extracted then internal order internal order normally used to plan collect and settle the cost of internal jobs and task internal order is a virtual place of collecting or pooling the cost of a particular activity task or a task internal orders are used for short term purposes like trade fair or job fairs projects etc product cost controlling which is again a sub module or uh, of controlling part is the backbone of a strong standard cost system it calculates the cost that occurs during manufacturing of a product or provision of a service it enables you to calculate the minimum price at which a product can be profitably marked profitability analysis profitability analysis analyzes the profit or loss of an organization by individual market segments the market segments can be products customers or sales district as per the region or the country to country or it may have some other other scenarios they can be taken as a segment as well then we comes to the report painter which will be a part of your content report painter is the main tool for defining reports in the information system in the controlling module all of the controlling reports like cost center accounting internal order or the profit center accounting are created using report painter you can also create reports in the fi module with report painter you can define reports quickly easily and across rows and columns so these were the different course contents that we'll be covering up in the in detail in the coming sessions to go for each of these different sub modules which we have just discussed and covered on the brief now moving on to the first chapter for the configuration step is the organizational structure organizational structure is the foundation upon which all sap components or modules are configured and built on if you work on any of the modules whether it may be fi or mm or sd or any other first of all is the is that you need to create the organizational structure which works as a foundation for that particular module which you are going to implement so if you go through the diagram as on the screen the organizational unit are used to structure business functions and for reporting as you can see on the screen there is a company code there is a client then the controlling area and the operating concern so these these four parts together creates an organizational structure where again operating concern is an optional part which is not needed until there is a profitability analysis module to be implemented so the basic three part which comprises of an organizational structure is client on the top most and the next is the company code and then the controlling area so moving on to the next is the what are the configuration steps that need to be done so as to to make the foundation for an organizational structure as on the screen these are the various configuration steps that we need to go for the first is the to maintain a controlling area so we need to define a controlling area then we have to activate the components to it what are the different components we'll be using and then assigning of company code to the controlling area 
maintaining number ranges for controlling documents and maintaining the version. So let's see these steps in the SAP system and they will be discussing about each of these steps what they are and how they are related to the to how they functions and how they are related to the the SAP system and to the company code. So these above configuration steps is a part of the organizational structure as discussed. The organizational structure is one of the most important activities when introducing the SAP system. Organizational structure is the foundation upon which all SAP components are configured and built. According to the complexity of the organizational structure from one organization to another and the SAP components with which you the you will be working you must first analyze the outcome that determine the organizational units has on the other SAP components. So let's see how we can go through these configuration steps in the SAP system. So moving on to the SAP screen now as you can see this is the SAP screen. Now the first screen when you log in uh, which come up to you is SAP easy access path. Now, so to move on to the configuration part, we always have to go for a special transaction which takes you to the configuration path for within the SAP system. Uh, that particular transaction code is called SPRO. Enter. So once you enter with the transaction SPRO and then you will find a new screen as on, uh, on your system that is for customizing or execute project. In that you will find couple of options on the screen and the one which is needed is SAP reference IMG. This SAP reference IMG refers to the implementation guide and this is the option which take you to the configuration steps doesn't matter that particular uh, configuration steps relates to the controlling module or any of the another SAP component part every module configuration steps you need to go for SAP reference IMG so once you click on to this SAP reference IMG now it takes you to the next screen which shows you the path the different path for different modules as relevant for you. So if you look for the controlling there is a module called controlling as you can see on the screen with the cursor. Now within this controlling there is a drop down option over here on the screen. So once you drop down it will show you all the different options within the controlling module that uh, need to be configured as a part of implementing the controlling module part. So if you go and click on to this option over here with the cursor you will find that there are a number of different options on your screen which are the part of the controlling module only. So there are different within controlling there are general controlling, cost element accounting, cost center accounting, then internal order, activity based costing, product costing, profitability analysis and profit center accounting. So nearly all of these these part we will be covering up in our course content in today uh, in the coming training sessions from today onwards. So moving on to the first configuration step that is over here is to maintain the controlling area. So for that on the screen you can find the path as on the screen with the transaction code also. So there are two way outs by which you can configure in the system. One is you can move with the path for which you need to go and execute the transaction SPRO and you need to move up to the SAP reference IMG screen and from there onward you can move with the path as we have been moving over here on the screen and the second way out is the shortcut that is the transaction code. The transaction code on the screen is OX06 or OKKP but I will refer with to go with the path because you cannot remember all the transaction codes for all the different configuration steps but if you know the 
path it becomes easier for you so uh, to to remember the things where that particular configuration step is so moving on to the first configuration step as on the screen you need to go to the spro then reference img then controlling within controlling you need to go to general controlling so you can see over here this is controlling and then there is a general controlling and in general controlling when you will expand this part now you will find organization over here and then maintain controlling area so in the organization you need to expand so now you will find these options which we need to go for for the organizational structure setup as we we went through the configuration steps so these were the three configuration steps which we will be covering up over here in the organization part first second and third which comprises your organizational structure now moving on to the first configuration step now is maintain controlling area now another important question come up is what is a controlling area so it's and it's important to understand each of the topics and what does that mean and how they are being related with the controlling and the other modules and their functions so the controlling area is the central organizational unit within the controlling module it is representative of a contained cost accounting environment where cost and revenues can be managed if you utilize controlling module or if you implement the controlling module you must configure at least one controlling area without having a controlling area controlling module cannot be implemented now even prior to beginning any configuration it is important to understand the relationships between the fi and the co module and between the controlling area and the operating concern so the operating concern will be discussing later on because that is a part of profitability analysis but in brief operating concern is the environment within which copa or profitability analysis operates so if in the controlling module you want to implement profitability analysis then you need to go for operating concern now if we talk about fi and co module the link between fi and co is established through the assignment of company codes to a controlling area a controlling area can contain multiple company codes assignment which you can say as one to many relationships but on the contrast a single company code cannot be assigned to more than one controlling area that means a single company code can only be assigned to only one controlling area so that's that's an important part which you must uh, keep in mind so keeping in mind there are there that there can be no cross controlling area or cross operating concern posting standards within the system now this link between fi and co is important so as to reconcile the fi and the co values to each other that's why there is an integration of fi and co has to be done in terms of sap best practices it is recommended that to establish only one controlling area for all your different company codes you should have a strong overriding reason to establish more than one controlling area within the same controlling company codes uh, one of such example to have a different controlling area for your different company codes could be that uh, uh, that the business lines are different and these business lines have absolutely no integration between the one between the between each other or the company codes so in a normal practical scenario one particular controlling area is created and the same controlling area is used for all the different company codes so as to have a proper reporting analysis 
and managerial decision making so now how we will be creating a controlling area for that you need to go to this screen over here maintain controlling area you can execute this symbol over here which you can see on the screen we need to execute this so once we click on to this this will be executed and once I clicked I executed that particular step you can see a new pop-up screen has been displayed on your screen now so now we need to go to this maintain controlling area as we need to maintain a controlling area for the company code so we need to double click onto the second option that is maintain controlling area so once we double click on it as you can see now a new screen has been generated in front of you and in this we need to go and we need to click on to this new entries to access the controlling area details configuration screen so once you click on to this new entries you will find a new screen has been on your screen now where you will find a whole empty screen where no details have been filled which is what you need to fill because this is a new entry part so there are a number of different fields one is a controlling area name person responsible so let's discuss one by one you can identify the required fields as those that have a check marks so there are certain fields which have a check marks on your screen and these all fields are the required entry in SAP that means you must have to fill these particular fields at least so as to create the controlling area so now moving on to this controlling area first in this controlling area you need to enter a four digit alpha numeric identifier for your controlling area if your controlling area will contain just one company code in that case we can select the option for controlling area that is one to one relationship to the company code that is this on just next to your screen this controlling area is equal to company code that says one to one relationship of controlling area to the company code but if you indicate that there is more than one company codes to a controlling area then assigning only one will not cause any system issues however if you do indicate that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between controlling area and the company code and then going back and having to change the settings will be difficult so if you go for this option on your screen controlling area is equal to company code it's difficult for you to come back and change the setting later on so it's better would be that if you just confirm that it will be a one to many relationship so that if you need it it will be available for you in the future so what we will be doing is we'll be creating one to many relationship so the controlling area which we we have to take is a four digit alphanumeric code so the code that I would be taking up right now is 1200 that is my company code code as well now the next come up is the name you have to enter the description of your controlling area so the description over here for the controlling area can be controlling area for 1200 or even you can write it so there is no multiple space available so this is what I have written up as a name or as a description of the controlling area the next thing next field is the person responsible here you need to name the person responsible for this particular configuration so the name of the person has to be assigned and however it is not a mandatory field as you can see this is not a tick mark so even you want you can leave this field blank so suppose right now I am been taking the name over here as Colleen for example 
Now moving to the next is the assignment control field. In this, the next field come up is the company code and the controlling area. Now this field is used to define the relationship between the company code and the controlling area. You will have identified this relationship when you determine the controlling area ID over here on the first tab only. So in this you need to select the drop down options. So there are two options in front of you when you go for this drop down over here. The one is controlling area same as company code and the second is controlling cross company code cost accounting. So remember that the combination of the assignment control selection and the con currency type sorry now here we have to take one to one relationship between the company code in the first case and if you go for more than two company code assignment with the controlling area in that case you should go for a cross company code cost accounting so as discussed in the first option that the better option is to take a cross company code cost accounting so that in the future even if you want to use the same controlling area with a different company code you can use it and the system will allow you to use it but in case you define a one to one relationship it will be difficult and the system will not allow you to use the same controlling area with a different company code. So moving to the next field is now currency settings. So in the currency setting part the first field come up is the currency type. This setting defines the type of currency used throughout the controlling area. Cur currency settings can be confusing. Remember that the combination of the assignment control which we have defined over here selection and the currency type which we will be defining over here define the controlling area currency and depending on the settings defined then the other company code currency indicator is activated. So if you have selected suppose over here we let's see the options available for the currency type so we can go for the F4 key or as on your screen there are number of different currency types options on your screen. So one is company code currency, the second is controlling area, third is group currency, fourth is hard currency, fifth is index based currency and sixth is global company currency. So which of the currencies we would be using it over here? The first one that is the company code currency is used if all the company code assigned use the same currency. The second one is offers the use of a possible group currency for the controlling area. So the controlling area currency allows the controlling area to identify a specific currency for only that controlling area. All other selections impose artificial constraints. So rest of these below different other currency types are not used. What is used is the first or the second that is 10 or 20 in most of the cases. So the one we will be taking up over here is the company code currency as we will be taking the company code currency as the same as that of the controlling area. So we will assign this 10 that is the company code currency over here on the screen. So as we assign, you can see in the very next screen, the currency system has automatically taken the currency over here. So the entry is made directly when we selected the company code currency and the, currency, uh, the system has decided the company's currency as UST. Now moving to the next is these two fields are deactivated. We don't need to have the use of them. Again moving up to this next screen that is currency valuation profile. With this indicator the currency and valuation profile determines which valuation views can be stored in which currencies. You will need to assign a currency and a valuation profile to a controlling area only if you are looking to 
store multiple values and views in the system. So this is something which is an advanced part which we will not be using it as of now. We will be moving to the next part that is the other settings as of now and here we need to select the chart of account now. So in this we will be taking up the chart of account which will be assigned to the controlling area. So one thing you have to remember that all the company codes assigned the same controlling area must use the same chart chart of account that simple is that the same chart of account should be used with all those company codes which has been assigned the same controlling area so right now for our own company code 1200 the chart of account which has been assigned is we can go and we can have a look of that so the chart of account which we have created and assigned is 1000 so it is what the chart of account we have taken up the next is the fiscal year variant so fiscal year variant must be the same with that of the company code so the fiscal year variant which is assigned to the company code the same fiscal year variant has to be assigned over here to this particular controlling area so now I don't know what is the fiscal year variant I had assigned to my company code so I need to go and I need to cross check so we need to go to the trans a new session so I am moving to the transaction OBY6 and in this you can, I can go to my company code global data 1200 double click on that and now I can see that my fiscal year variant is YY as you can see on the screen so I can move to the next screen over here and I can assign my fiscal year variant to the particular controlling area that is over here YY so that is what I have assigned to it now the next point come up is the controlling standard hierarchy so in this part we need to create a hierarchy for cost center standard hierarchy so the hierarchy we have to create now over here so whatever the code which we will be assigning on the screen that will be created as a standard hierarchy in the SAP system so let's take the hierarchy as to be A1000 now moving on to the next the rest of the fields we are not required to do as of now because we are not activating the reconciliation ledger as of now we'll see that in the separate training session how the FI and the CO reconciliation is done so these are the basic things which you need to fill in the controlling area part the first is the controlling area second is the name then the person responsible controlling area to company code relationship then the currency type currency and then the chart of account filled fiscal year variant and then the cost center standard hierarchy so once we have done this we can move on and we can save this screen so once we save this is the basic settings which have been done so Colleen is the name which is not been taken up by the system so the name which can be taken up by the system is the one which is defined as a username so the username which we have defined in the system we can have a look to this so are these number of different usernames which have been defined into the SAP system so you the person who will be defining the controlling area with his own user ID that particular person can be taken up over here so there is a huge list of different username on the screen and either of these any one can be taken up for or even it can be left blank so right now I'm not taking any person responsible and now we'll be will enter on the screen so once you enter the system give ask you something and that is that do you want to create any standard hierarchy so we need to click on to yes because the standard hierarchy does not exist so whenever you assign the hierarchy over here these are the hierarchy which are not created into the system we need to create so we need to click on to yes so once we define on the yes it says the controlling area already exists so you can see the system gives an error that an entry already exists with the same key 
that means we need to take a separate or a different key over here right now so let's take a different key that is uh, suppose I take it as Z100 and now I can enter on the screen so once I enter and now we can go and we can save this screen over here again we have to go to click on yes and now you can see the changes or the customizations are now being moved to this request and we need to click on to continue so that the request can save all the customizations in it and you can see the data was saved now this means that the controlling area basic settings have been completed now so moving to the next step is assignment of company code or company codes to the controlling area so to go for this configuration step we need to move on to the SAP system and again the menu path will be the same as we have used for maintain controlling area so we need to go to the SPRO enter then we need to go to the SAP reference IMG in that we need to go to controlling and expand then we need to go to general controlling expand and then organization and then we need to go to the maintain control area and we need to execute this tab over here so once we click on that this is the screen which comes up in your in your system and we need to double click on to the maintain controlling area so the last controlling area which we created just a while back was Z100 so that we can search with the position over here and this is the controlling area on the screen as we can see and now we can select this controlling area over here and we need to move up to this particular option second option over here in the basic data that is display assignment of company code or company codes so once we select the, comp the controlling area over here now we need to go to assignment of new company code assignment of company code or company codes if there are more than one company code and we need to double click on the assignment of company code so now we can double click onto the assignment and once we double click on it it takes you to the next screen as you can see on your as on the screen that there is no company code the controlling area is Z100 but there is no company code being assigned on the screen so we need to assign the company code to the controlling area so to assign the company code to the controlling area we need to go to the new entries click on to the new entry button as on the header over here so we need we clicked on the new entries now we need to assign the company code as in the screen over here in the assign company code part so from over here you can search your company code with the search option or else you can directly assign the company code on the screen so we can take this the company code directly that is 1200 is the company code which we have to assign to the controlling area so once you have assigned you can enter on the screen and you will okay So the company code entry column in the assignment box is empty and we assign the company code over here as 1200 for the posting and we need to manually enter the company code in this particular assignment field for assigning it to the controlling area. So you can see on the screen we have assigned the company code over here and if there is one company code you can assign one company code on the screen if you have got multiple company codes that is more than one company code you can assign further to these different rows as under so that is what you have to do and once this has been assigned over here then we can go and we can save the screen and once the screen is saved you will see that the data was saved the message is generated that means the controlling area Z100 had been assigned to the company code 1200 that is IBM LLC so now this is the next step which we have completed now we need to move on to the next part that is activate components or control indicator 
So to activate the components and the control indicators, again we need to move on to the SAP screen. The path is again the same. So now we need to go to this activate control component or control indicators over here on the screen. So we need to move on and we need to double click on to this activate components or control indicator. As you double click on it, it will take you to the next screen and you can see again over here the existing fiscal year is blank. So in this case now as I double click on to the activate components you can find this screen as on the system and there is no fiscal year intervals has been assigned to this particular controlling area. So what we need to do is now we need to go to this new entries over here on the header and once we click on to the new entries you will see that a new screen has came up over here for your reference and now in this particular screen we need to fill the details. So the first fill in, that, in this particular part is the controlling area which is uh, already been assigned as Z100 which we had defined and we have been customizing the same controlling area for the company code. So now in this the first field which comes up to you is the fiscal year. So in this we need to enter the fiscal year when activation settings becomes valid. So you realize that the in this two field it's a gray part which you cannot fill any details because the system will automatically fill this with the year as 9999. So you need to fill the fiscal year and the first column from when you want this controlling area to be activated. So I would be taking this fiscal year as 2014 that is the current fiscal year from which I will be activating the fiscal year. So if in case you decide that you need to adjust the ending that is the two part of the fiscal year in that case uh, you need to go back into this screen using the change process and then you can change the two field as well in the fiscal year. So right now you need to take the fiscal year as 2014. The two part you don't have to assign because it is a gray part. The system will take it as 9999. Moving to the next step is the controlling area, cost center, sorry. So as we moved on to the cost center, you can see that activate components. This is what we are talking about activate components. So now in controlling, there are different sub parts like cost centers, profit center accounting, activity type, order management, profit analysis, activity based costing. So a huge list of different active components are there. Now you need to decide that out of these, which of the components will be activated for the organization. So the first is the cost center. Now the cost center refers to the cost center accounting, which is actually right now is inactive as over here the component is not active option is there. So once you click onto this option over here there are certain parameters in front of you. The component is active, is not active, is active for validation, active for existence validations. So what you need to do over here is you need to select the component active part so as to make the cost center accounting activated. So this is what we have selected. Now moving on to the next part is the activity type as on your screen. So this activity type, now in this you need to check this box over here. So as to make the activity type activated and the activity type will be available for posting against the primary cost element. So we'll be selecting this activity type as well as on the screen. Next we'll be moving up is the order management. Now order management refers to the internal order accounting which uh, will be unavailable until we change the initial entry in the field. So the initial entry as of now is component is not active. So we need to go for component active option over here so as to activate the internal order accounting. So as we selected this the internal the order management now will get activated. Similarly, we'll be moving up to the next that is the commitment management and we'll make this component as active again. Now profit analysis is already in a deactivated part because we don't need this at this moment. We'll see that on a later uh, 
ahead how that can be done. Now moving up to the next is activity based costing. So we need to activate this part as well. So this uh, or we can leave it as well as of now we don't need that. So once that would be needed we will be activating that. So we'll be activating the components over here and in case any of the component is not activated as of now we can revisit that later on and we can activate that particular component as per the business scenarios and requirement. So now moving up to the next part is the we can activate the profit center accounting activate the project. So profit center accounting has to be activated. So we have selected the profit center accounting. The next comes up is the projects that has to be selected. So if you are utilizing the project system or you can say the, the another module that is project system is a separate module in SAP. If you are utilizing that project system module then this setting becomes important and you have to select the project system over here. The project system integrates with the CO module through work back work, uh, through the work breakdown structure that is known as WBS elements and networks in SAP system. So if we activate the projects into the controlling area the WBS elements and the network networks as real account assignment objects and the CO data will get recorded in the controlling part. So that's why we have selected the project over here. The next comes up is the order sales orders. So now sales orders if the organization is going for utilizing the make to order production if there is a make to order process in the organization in that case the settings become important to select the sales order. So if you are not you not having any order to uh, make to order production in your company then you can leave this blank but in case there is then you have to activate this as all the revenues and the cost will post post to the sales order item therefore the system will create a costing object for the sales order and the CEO will be able to track the revenue and the cost assigned to the sales order number. So it is why if there is any make to order process in the organization then you need to select this sales order else you can leave this as unselected. Moving to the next now is cost objects. So if you are or your organization is using repetitive manufacturing within your product cost environment this setting again become relevant. The repetitive manufacturing uses the cost objects to plan and track the production cost. So we'll see each of these how these are being used into the system but right now if you want you can activate these options or if not you can come back later on and we can activate as per the requirement later on as well. So this is how you need to activate your cost center where we have selected the component active then we have moved to the activity type which we have selected then order management is activated component commitment management has been selected and then we need to select the profit center accounting projects and sales orders. So once we have done these all part now we can move on and we can save this screen and the these components which we are talking about or the control indicators will get activated for the controlling area Z100 and the company code 1200. So we can save this screen now. So as we selected you can see the information control indicator in the controlling area and this is a very critical transport request that's where the message has been generated and we can select on to this continue. So once we select on to the continue the settings or the activations have been saved in the request. So you can see that the data was saved. So these components have become activated into the controlling area. So this is how you will be creating your controlling area and once you have created the controlling area you need to assign your company code or company codes to the controlling area 
and once the assignment of company code to the controlling area is done you need to activate the different components or the different sub modules which you want to be activated for the controlling module for your organization need to be done it may be that you will not be using all of the different components in the controlling area which needs to be activated you just need to activate those part which is actually be, to be implemented in the controlling module for the organization so we have covered with the first part now we'll be moving to the next configuration step is to maintain the number ranges for controlling documents so now moving up to the next is maintain number range for controlling document this menu path and the transaction code is on your screen it's the same path where we created the controlling area and very next to that is the maintain number range for controlling documents the transaction code for that is K A N K now if you go and we check in the SAP system you can see on the screen that the path is you need to go to controlling then to general controlling organization then last we did was maintain controlling area and the very next to it is maintain number ranges for controlling documents so this is to maintain the number range for controlling documents now within SAP all postings are tracked through the assignment of a document number the document number signed is dependent upon a couple of factors the activity used to update the CO file and the number range assigned within the controlling area the number ranges assigned can be internally generated by SAP or flagged to allow external updates or a manual document number updates can also be done however we recommend that SAP generated number internally should be preferred as a standard process which will be unique and a repetition of the same document number will not be done in any case so we'll be moving to this particular step of maintaining number range for controlling documents and we'll see how this can be done in the SAP system so the path is on your screen we need to go to the controlling then general controlling to organization and within that the second option over here is to maintain number ranges for controlling documents so to create the number ranges or to maintain the number ranges for controlling document we need to go to this step and have to click on to this IMG activity once you click it takes you to the next screen as you can see range maintenance see your document so here we will be maintaining the controlling document and for that we need to assign the CO area that is the controlling area so the controlling area which we just created in the last step that is Z100 now to create the number ranges we need to perform certain tasks one is to set up number range assignment groups then assign activities as per the necessities and creating the number range intervals there are two methods for creating the assignment groups one is to copy from an existing controlling area or the second one is to create a group from scratch if we copy the number ranges in this case we just need to go to this copy option over here so when you click on to this copy we need to assign the from and in the from you need to take 0001 as a controlling area that is a standard controlling area defined by SAP itself it's a SAP delivered controlling area 0001 and 2 will be the target controlling area that is 
Z100. And once you assign this from and to and you click on to this right click, all the different groups and the number ranges assigned to the standard controlling area 0001 will be copied to Z100. So this is one of the way out of creating the number ranges in the SAP system. And the another way out is to go with the scratch as a manual activity and create one by one. Else you can cancel this and you can move on creating your own number range manually. So for that you need to go for this control area. You need to assign your control area over here and if you remember it that's great. Else you can go and you can search with the options. So you can move on and you can search your controlling area that is over here controlling area for 1200 which we had defined. So we can select this over here. So once we have selected the number range now we can go for a display option just as a cross check. So once you click onto the display you will find that it is blank as of now. So there is no number range defined as of now on the screen. So to create the number range now what we need to do is we first need to so we need to go to click on the groups as on your system at the header you can see over here maintain so this basically refers to maintain groups button so we need to click on click on to this maintain groups so I clicked on to this maintain groups as you can see so once we have clicked onto the group now we need to go to the on the top as a menu screen menu item and over here we need to go to this group over here and once we go for this group we need to click onto the group and once we click you will find that there is an insert option maintain text and expand so we need to go to click onto the insert option over here so once we click onto the insert now you can see a new screen has came up on the system. So over here we need to maintain the text for that particular group which we are maintaining. So over here you can fill the details. So suppose I fill the detail like uh, number range for 1200 and you can maintain the number from and to on the system. So suppose I maintain the number over here like this to so this is how I have maintained the number and now once you have put the text and you have maintained the number range on the screen now you can move and you can select this plus sign over here so as you click on to this insert option over here, now the number range will be inserted into the system so you can see that the number has been taken up over here on the screen so this is how we have assigned the number range and we have inserted the number range on the screen now what we can do is there are two number range which we have defined now we can select that and we have to assign the objects from over here. So which object has to be assigned that has to be taken care like one is over here is COIN which is used for generating the document number in CO for the documents which have been posted from the FA module. So we need to click on to this option over here and then we need to go to the select option select element so these are different elements on your screen and you need to click on any of them which you want to assign this particular number range to so once I click on to this first element and we need to go to the select element so you will see the change that this particular element will become highlighted so once I click on to this select element you will see that this has been highlighted now and now I can go for this element assigning this particular element to this particular group which I have created the number range for 1200. So once I click on to this element this particular element COIN will get assigned to my number range 1200. So you can see now the 
not assigned part has moved to the assigned part. So the number range which I have created for 1 to 0, 0 will be used for this cost element that is C O I N. Similarly, if you use you want to use the other elements for that particular number range, that can also be done. So right now we'll be using this part and now we can move on and we can save this screen and now the number range is created. So this is what we needed as of now to assign this particular element COIN to the system. So this is how you have to assign or maintain the number range for the group. So even if you want to see, you can go to this display groups and you can see the number range on the screen with the display option. So you can see over here, this particular first group we have created has been assigned this this particular element to this. The rest of the elements you can see over here is written as a detailed non-assigned element. So this is how the assignment of uh, these elements has to be done with the system. So that is why it has been said that there are two ways or two methods for creating your assignment groups or the number range. One is copy from an existing controlling area that is 0001 or creating a new group from scratch. It is far easier to copy a group as recommended in this approach we have seen while copying 0001 for the, com for the controlling area Z100 but we have not did that. We have uh, seen all these steps for that and we went on creating it from the very scratch so we maintain the group we assign the number range and we assign the element to that particular number range group so as we are done with the maintaining number range for controlling documents now moving to the next configuration step is maintain versions so this is one of the another important configuration step which need to be done and you must maintain a version to support planned and actual activities. Version 0 is generated automatically within the system when you create the controlling area. Version 0 is only version that where the actual transaction data is posted. SAP allows you to maintain numerous planning versions and all versions are controlling area independent. This means that all versions are maintained at the client level and thus are available to any controlling area in the client. Let's see how we can go and configure this version. Now the path is same and very next step is to maintain the version as we first did the maintain controlling area then the last one we did is the maintain number range and the very next is to maintain the versions so in simple words the version which is created over here is at the client level and it can be used by any other controlling area within that particular client to complete the base controlling enterprise configuration or you can say the, org the, the basic organizational structure configuration. We need to configure the version 0 for the current fiscal year and for the profit center accounting as well. So let's see how we can go for this and we can create this version. So we need to go and execute this step over here. And once we execute, it takes us to the next screen on this system now in this we have to select the version 0 so if the organization wants to make the comparison for the plan and the actual data in that case we have to select the version 0 the version 0 is the only version where the actual transaction data is posted the SAP allows you to maintain the numerous planning version as you can see 1, 2 as below or even you can create new versions as well. And all the versions are controlling area independent. This means that 
whatever the versions as defined on the screen or can be created new all are maintained at the client level and thus are available to any controlling area in the client so to complete the base co enterprise configuration we need to configure the version 0 as over here on the first option for the current fiscal year and for the profit center accounting so we need to select this version and then we have to move up to the next over here in the control controlling area setting setting for each fiscal year so as you can see on the right hand side there is an option of setting for each fiscal year we need to double click on to that particular option so double click on it so double click on the setting for each fiscal year as I double click on to the option it asks you for the controlling area so you have to assign the controlling area Z100 then continue or enter so as I entered it took me to the next screen as you can see in this whenever you decide a particular version 0 the system automatically takes the five next five fiscal year for the controlling area now in this particular part we need to select copy allowed for all of them so that all the transactions can be copied in the controlling area so the first column is the fiscal year which as said that whenever we define a particular version 0 the system automatically takes the version for the next five years now the next part comes up is the version locked now in this field if we make this particular field active in that case the planning will be locked and you will not be able to plan for the controlling parts like the cost center planning or the profit center planning therefore we will not be activating these options this setting is useful if you want to freeze plan values after a certain date so that no one can change the plan values after once a plan values has been determined and has been assigned in the system next is integrated planning now if you want to activate this then transfer plan data from the cost center to the controlling or to the post profit center accounting or to special ledgers can be done since no plain data plan data exists in this version yet we will not be activating this particular part as well so as and when it will be required we can activate we can come back to this particular customization and we can activate that the next comes comes up is the copying allowed so select this field if you want to copy the plan version to one another we recommend that you activate the settings because of the flexibility it adds to your planning capabilities. With copying allowed activated, a company can easily maintain multiple planning scenarios. Copying the information from one to another and then making the version specific changes. So it is advisable to select the copying allowed as on the screen and once we have done this we can move on and we can save the screen so once we have saved the versions have been created for the controlling area so this is what we have completed now so we have completed all the three basic configuration steps of controlling that is maintaining the controlling area maintaining number ranges for controlling documents and maintain versions so this is what we have covered for the today's training session and we'll see you in the next training session with a new topic thank you